Thanks everyone for coming to our workflow and notifications webinar today. As Linda had mentioned, my name's Bill Flig. I'm our North America sales manager. And with us today on the presentation is Jamie Steele, and he's our business development manager. A little bit of information about Pacific Tech. We've been providing solutions for Sage 300 for over 20 years. We're focused on delivering tier one capability and enhanced functionality to what is over 2,600 customers around the world we use the Sage 300 software development kit, which is known as the SDK. This is a really big feature for you to make note of. Our solutions are engineered and designed the same way that Sage 300 is developed and all of our solutions reside inside of Sage 300. We have a very comprehensive procure to pay solution, which includes AP automation. Also with that, we've some very innovative modules, including web-based solutions and mobile capabilities. Our data centers around the world are in Canada, Australia, South Africa, and New Zealand. We've won a number of awards over the years from Sage that we're quite proud of, and we truly are a global ISV. A little bit of an overview on our solutions. If you were to put them into compartments, we have what you would call workflow suite, control suite, and mobility suite. Our workflow suite includes things like payables workflow, purchasing workflow, workflow and notifications that you're going to see today. Control Suite also includes workflow and notifications because it gives you control around vendor master files with areas such as controlling vendor bank account changes, which Jamie will get into more later. It also gives you the ability to approve check processing and payments to vendors. In our Control Suite, we also have Audit Logger, some people refer to as Big Brother, and it gives you the ability to audit various activities throughout your accounting system so that you know who's been doing various things throughout your ERP. We also have the Mobility Suite, which includes our PW Web and our Pacific Tech Go app. Okay, Jamie, over to you. All right, yeah, thanks for that, Bill, and hello to everyone who's attending. Thanks for your time. So, yeah, just carrying on as from Bill's uh, comments so this diagram shows our th three different workflow solutions so we've on the left hand side is purchasing workflow so the whole procurement side in the middle is payables workflow which is the AP automation and expense report solution and the module we'll be looking at today is workflow notifications which is this one on the right hand side so as you'll see, we, well, so workflow notifications, we abbreviate that to WN, you'll be hearing us talking about WN, and so WN it covers 24 entities within say 300, and so it's a very broad workflow module. And so when we say entities, some of the key entities are some of your master file ones, so customer master files, vendor master files, general ledger account codes, IC items. So those are four different entities, those are master file entities. And then WN also works on a number of the key transactions as well. So you can have workflows on general ledger journals, AP payments, AR credit notes, etc. So here you can see for, for each of our workflow modules, we've got up the top here PW Web, which is the web interface for managers to do their approvals. So that applies across all three of the workflow modules, and we'll show that to you in this session. This next slide is showing the whole procure to pay, so the end to end procure to pay business process. And we won't go through this, uh, we won't spend too much time on this, but you can just see that WN features as as part of this P2P solution. So we've got WN at the at the start of the process in terms of vendor master files and also here at the end of the process in terms of paying suppliers. So those are the two areas where WN contributes to the P2P solution. All right. So just in terms of how that the PW Web architecture is set up so the say 300 system is here on the right hand side the connected services are running on our infrastructure that are in those different locations that bill mentioned so for north america the, this is running on servers in a data center in toronto and so if someone's doing an approval a WN approval, so if they're approving a, a change to a vendor or a new vendor or a AP payment, they can be doing that through the web interface and that's connecting to our PW Web software 
running on our servers and that's connecting in real time to say 300 and so yeah it's real time connectivity and it's really it's a web portal for the workflow solutions okay so now if we just talk, look at some of the key concepts within wn it's first of all it's sitting inside say 300 and you'll see that how that makes it so easy to configure and there's two different parts to it so there's the workflows and then there's the notifications so the workflows is where a user needs to make an approval before an ad or an update gets applied to sage and so that's the whole approval side of things the other option is a notification and so that's sending out an email when a certain criteria are met so sometimes you know companies just want to be notified of things happening rather than having a full approval process so that's where the notifications apply it developed fully in the sage 300 sdk and it utilizes a lot of the concepts from our other workflow modules and also from the audit logger module so wn is really bringing those two areas together and just i guess one key thing is comparing it to audit logger so audit logger is you know a module that's been around for quite a number of years and got a you know, lot of customers that use it and it does a great job but it's more of a system that just captures data about the changes so you know for a lot of companies that's exactly what they want but WN is more proactive in terms it can require an approval before an update happens so and we do have quite a number of clients that will have both audit logger and workflow notifications so you know if they're listed companies that's um it's reasonably common. Now, WN's got a query builder and we'll show this to you. So this is where you can develop your own queries as to what events will trigger a workflow or a notification. And so that's quite a powerful part of the system. And also as with all of our workflow solutions, they're able to run macros. And so that means, you know, you can really put in a lot of sort of custom functionality or certain clients and so just moving on to this next slide so the way the workflows work are in two different ways so first of all on master files and setup screens if the user goes to make an, an ad or a change WN will intercept that and store that information in its own tables until the approval has been carried out and once the approval has been carried out then that add all that change will get applied to sage so that's the way that master files work for batch transactions such as ap payments and gl journals the way wn works is when the user goes to post the batch wn will determine if any approvals are required and if they are it'll set the batch status to awaiting approval and then it monitors how many of those entries need to be approved and once the final one has been approved or declined then WN will set the batch status to ready to post and just in terms of what happens if someone declines an entry from a batch what WN will do is delete that entry out of that batch and it can put that into a into a new decline batch um, so the idea there is that the user doesn't need to re-key the information. It's already sitting there ready to be edited and resubmitted. Yeah, so and just this last point here, so in, in both cases the information or the record is locked while it's awaiting the approval process. All right, so in terms of this, we've got a diagram that shows some of these concepts. So as the user carries out their action WN is monitoring the view then will determine whether a notification is required or an approval is required or maybe neither you know if someone does a journal entry for one dollar it might not need to be approved so in that case it just flows through as if WN wasn't there but if it meets the criteria then it can send out the email notification or if it requires an approval then an email can be sent to the manager to say they need to do an approval they can then do that approval through WN in the desktop or through PW web and then once the final approval has been done then WN will apply the ad or the change to say 300 
Okay, so now we'll have a look at the software itself. So here we've got our Sage desktop. So you can see the WN module over here. And so if we come and have a look, first of all, so I'm logged in as the controller. So we'll come and have a look at the setup side of it quickly. So just a few key areas. So we've got authority levels. So these are, are really, like with all of our workflow modules, you, the standard approach is to start off with some, like the board of directors is level 10, then the CEO is level 20, and then down through the organization like that. So that's just setting up those authority levels and a, a few permissions that there are, can be granted for different authority levels. Then we've got our user configurations. And so this is where we just store some fields about each of the users, especially what authority level that they are and who their manager is and their email address as well. But now let's just look at really the, the key part of WN, which is the workflows. So if we just put in a few characters like that, so now we can look at all of the different types of workflows that are available. And so this is where these are covering these 24 entities. So you can, if we just run through some of the key ones, we've got vendors, we've got AP payments, we've got some of the key AP configurations, so account sets, vendor groups. And then if you come into customers, we've got customers, account sets, customer groups again, and we've got AR invoices. So that's what a lot of companies want to do is have a workflow on their credit notes because credit notes are a way that the staff can perpetrate a fraud by putting a credit against an invoice. So credit, AR credit notes is quite a key workflow. Then we've also got an admin services. We've got a, you can have workflows on users. Um, so as users are set up or changed, they can go through an approval process. And then if we come into IC, you can see we've got IC account sets, IC items, categories, and also IC adjustments. So that's another one that's quite a common transactional one that people want to have workflows on. And then down under general ledger, we've got two here, general ledger accounts and general ledger journals. And so in North America, we've had quite a number of customers that have purchased the WN module specifically for GL journals, because I believe if you're listed on the stock exchange, I think one of the requirements for SOX is for GL journals to be um, have an approval process. All right, so this is all provided within the WN module. So, you know, it's just one license for WN and you get all of these workflows. Some people say to us, can, you know, is this configurable by each, each customer or each business partner? And the answer is that no, it isn't. This list is predetermined, developed by us, so you can't add to it. But we're always happy to take input for what people are looking for for workflows. So, you know, there's quite a few of these have been added based on requests from customers. Now, one other area that I just want to point out that's quite important is the deletion. So you can actually have a workflow on deletion of master files. And so that can be quite valuable in its own right, because sometimes I think Sage lets some things be deleted when, like I think you can delete an item, even if it's on a purchase order, that sort of thing. And that can cause, you know, some downstream issues. So that's where we've got that workflow can be quite useful. All right, so that's just um, the overview of the different workflows. So what we'll do for our session today is we'll just look at four of these. So the first one that we'll look at is customers and the workflows, oh, we've got a pretty straightforward in terms of um, not having too many approval steps. And just for a demo, you know, we don't want to spend too much time doing the approvals. But here, so what you can see on customers, what we're saying, check if the credit limit exceeds $10,000. And this is a field evaluation step. And if it's a success, then it will go to step 100. And then if it's a failure, it will go to step zero. Yeah, I'll just open this up and show you how what the logic of that is. So here we've got our field evaluation step. And here you can see it's got the query here. Check if the credit limit is greater than $10,000. So if we wanted to modify that or add more steps, 
then we could come into the build criteria button and this now shows us where we can set up the query. So here we're saying this customer credit limit is greater than $10,000. If we just look at some of these fields, oh, first of all, if we look at the field source, this is which view that this can be triggered off. So it can be triggered off customers or customer optional fields. Um, so if you want to trigger workflows off certain optional fields, you can do that. And then here, if we go on the field column or drop down, it's now showing us pretty much all of the fields on the customer master file. So we can choose the field that we want. Then we go into the operator and we've, we've got a number of different operators here. So because credit limits are value, these operators are all applicable for values. So you can see greater than, less than is changed. Percentage change exceeds. So, you know, in that case, you say if the credit limits change by more than 5%, then you want to have a workflow. Or you can have a value change as well. And then we have our value. So here, this because this is a dollar value field, it's now asking us for a dollar value. So what this is saying, if the credit limits change to any value that is greater than $10,000, then that will trigger the workflow. But what you can also do, you can add in more criteria here. So you can, you've got this first field, which is and or or. So you can, you know, set up those different types of um, operators. And then let's say we, if we wanted to choose, say, on different account sets, then, you know, if we wanted to maybe exclude um, a certain account set. And so now what you can see is this check value, because, because we've chosen account set here, this value is now presenting a finder looking at the account sets with an AR. And this, is, this has got some quite good functionality because it's all inside say 300, so it makes it you know, very easy to use. Yeah, so you can just build up different criteria here using ands and ors to build up your criteria that you want. But yeah, just on this one again, you know, because the, this, this is reiterating, because this is built inside the Sage 300 SDK, you know, you could, you're seeing a list of the field descriptions from Sage 300. So rather, you know, some of the other workflow products work at the database level. You know, that means the business partners or the customers are having to, you know, try and work out which field and which table is the one they want to work with. Whereas here, because we're in the, the Sage SDK, all of that complexity is removed and you're now dealing with you know nice friendly descriptions so so we've had quite a few customers or business partners i should say have said to us you know they find this wn is just very easy to implement um and some people use the term plug and play so that's our criteria so if the credit limit's greater than ten thousand dollars then that will trigger an approval process and so down here you can see if the conditions meet, so if the credit limit is greater than $10,000, then it's unapproved, so that means it needs to be approved. And then if it's not met, so in other words, the credit limit's changed to a value below $10,000 or any other field has changed, then no approval is required, so that's just set to approved. And next step of zero means that it just carries on without any further process. So that's um, that query builder side of things. And then, so if it does need approval, then it comes to step 100, which is authorization by the controller. So if we look at the detail, we say which user it needs to go to. We can notify them if, if you want to, you can send an email to them. And you can also say how many days they've got to do their approval. So that can be used for reports if, um, if, or inquiries, you know, if people are overdue for their approvals. All right, so that's the customer master file. So now let's look at the vendor one, just to show you, so I won't say my changes. So on the vendor master file, what we're saying here, step 10, check whether it's a new record. So if it's a new vendor, then it needs to be approved. So that's this field here specifies that. But if it's not a new vendor, if it's a change to an existing vendor, then it goes to step 20. And so what we're saying, check if the bank account number, so BAN, that's bank account number, if that is changed, then 
it ne that needs to be approved as well. So if it's a new vendor, it needs to be approved. Or if it's an existing vendor and the bank account numbers change, then that needs to be approved as well. All right, so now the next one is AP payments. So what we're saying here, check if, if the payment is over $5,000. So, so this is now a batch transaction type within Sage. So when the batch is post, when the user clicks on the post button, WN will then look to see if any payments are over $5,000. And if they are, it will send those off to be approved. And again, we've got them going to the controller. Um, and then the last one that we'll do in this demo is GL journals. So what we've got here is we're saying for any GL journals that are over $100 and where the source letter is GL, then that will go for an approval. And in this case, we've got it set up to need two approvals. So, so it can go to the controller first and then after the controller, it can go to the CEO for the second approval. So that's, I guess, something I hadn't really touched on before now, but within each workflow, you can have many approvals, you know, and you can have for different dollar values, different approvals, you know, so more approvals needed for the higher dollar values. So those are the four workflows that we'll go through in our demo today. So let's hop over and have a put through some transactions now. So what I'll do is log in as someone called staff. And so one of the beauties with the WN module, it basically just sits behind the Sage screen. So from the users that are using Sage 300, there's no change to the way they carry out their processes. So if we come into our customers and if we come here to a customer and so what we'll do is, oh, we won't go to cash. Let's go to this one, 8831, which is the paper hangers. So let's say if we're changing the credit limit, so we'll change it from $20,000 to $30,000 and click on save. So what you'll see now is a, this message pops up saying record modification has been submitted for approval. And you can see that the credit limit, we changed it, or we tried to change it from 20,000 to 30,000, but WN has determined that that needs to be approved. So it's now, it's not allowed that change to happen. It's because it needs approval. All right, so that was customer 8831. So that's where we've done a change to a credit limit. Now, if we come to our vendor master files. So let's go and add a new vendor, first of all. And I'll do it in a sort of, what should we say, efficient way, or you could, some people would say cheating. So I'll just use the feature within Sage. I'll just change that from 26 to 27. So now effectively I'm adding a new vendor um, and I'll click on add. And so what WN again, <coughs> it's determined that um, now someone, <coughs> this person's adding a new vendor. So it's saying new record has been submitted for approval. Just make a note of that. So now if we go back to, if we scroll back one record and then scroll forward a record, you can see that number 27 is actually not within the vendor database. So again, WN's captured the information and um, um, it's holding it until it's approved. Now, if we, let's come and change a vendor bank account number now. So in this case, we've got this optional field here, which is um, storing the bank account number. <clears throat> so what we'll do is we'll attempt to change this to, our, let's say it's to our own bank account number, which is what we want to avoid or make sure is approved. So we're changing it from four nines to four eights click save and again WN has now intercepted that and um, um, kept it as it was originally. All right, so those are the master file changes. Now let's come and do a couple of transactions. So we'll come into our GL transactions and we'll do a, um, a batch within GL.
So we'll do journal for thousand dollars. So now if we go to post this, the WN has now said that batch has been submitted for approval. So if we close that, you can see it's got the status here. So so WN has because it meets the criteria and the what the criteria were was as the source ledger was GL and it was over hundred dollars. So this batch, this entry meets those criteria. So WN has um has set that batch status to awaiting approvals. Right, and then we'll now come and do a payment batch. So to a new batch. And so we'll do vendor twelve hundred. So that's one payment, we'll do another payment here for vendor twenty eight hundred. So that's a payment of $7,000. So those two payments are both over $5,000. Let's put in another payment for a small value that's under $5,000. All right, so we've got three payments there. So now we go to post that batch. And again, WN, it's determined that some of those entries need to be approved. So entries one and two are over $5,000, so they need to be approved. And so they set that status to awaiting approvals. All right, so let's now go and log in as the controller. And because the controller is the approver of, of all of these four or five instances, so we can come to the WN module and we come to WN approvals and open our approval console. So this is now showing us a tree view of all the different instances that this person needs to approve. So you can see there's three vendor instances. And so here are the two we've done. So we've added a new vendor here. So it says new record. And here we're changing this one, 1200. And we've got two payments. So those are the two payments from our batch 119 that need approvals. Then we've got our customers. So we've got one here we were changing a customer. We've got some credit notes from a few days ago, and then here's our GL journal. So we can approve all of these within the desktop, and that's uh, quite a common approach. But let's just go and have a look at PWWeb as well, just to show you the ability to do the approvals from the web interface. So we'll log in as the controller. So this is this can use the Sage authentication or it can use Windows authentication. And so again, so this lets us look at all approvals of all three of our workflow modules. So I've got my default my landing page set to WN. And so here you can see the same information that we saw within the desktop. Because this is a web portal, this is all live, so it's reading from say 300 live, so there's no sort of intermediate tables or anything like that. So we can see that same information here. So let's say if we wanted to, let's look at our vendors. So, so here we can see we've got a new vendor here, which is ZZ27. So if we click on this hyperlink, um, what this is now doing is showing us all of the the fields from the vendor master file. So we can see those. So yeah, so within the web, we've I guess we've got quite a lot of the features available. It's quite close to what's in the desktop, but not quite to the same extent. But so anyway, let's just do this approval here. So we'll come here and we'll say approve and we'll say, and so we can put up, we can put in a 60 character comment on each approval. And also if we wanted to decline a change, so let's say if, if we weren't happy with this one here, we can decline it and we can say something like, please get more information or whatever. All right, so here we're doing one approval and one decline.
And so then we click on Postmark Documents, and so this is now talking to Sage in real time and moving those two instances along to the next step in the process. Right, so now if we just come in here and click Refresh, so you can see we've got three vendor instances. So if we click Refresh, it's now gone from three down to one because those two have been, the other two have already been dealt with. All right, so let's just come and look at this other one here. This, so someone's changing this vendor. So we can click on the print button and that will now present to us a, a report that shows us what this user is trying to change. So here it's saying the vendor number 1200 and it's what the, the current value is 9999. What the person is trying to change it to is 8888. So, you know, we can see that, that information quite easily. So if we're happy with that, we click on approve as yes. Then let's come to our customers. So we had this one here, um, 8831. So if we again click on print to see what the user is changing. So we can see they're changing the credit limit or that's, they're trying to change a credit limit from $20,000 to $30,000. So we can then again either approve or decline that. Here we've got our AR invoices, so we've got our two credit notes. So we'll um, we just leave those there. And here's our GL journal that we did earlier. So what we can do from a GL journal, if we double click on that, it will now open up the journal and we can so we can have a look at that. I'm going to approve that. And so now if, if we come to payments, so with AP payments, we've got a bit more functionality. So here are our two payments. So and here's this first one for chloride system, so $16,000. So if we click on the detail button, this will now list the invoices that are being paid by that payment. Uh, it's only one invoice. And then what we can do is we can click on the document button and that takes us to the AP invoice screen. If we've got our payables workflow module in place, then you can then drill from that screen to the payables workflow AP invoice entry screen, and there you can open up the invoice PDF, and you can also look at who's approved though that invoice. So this is now showing us the approvals of the invoice. So this person approved it, they put in that comment there, and then this person approved it, and it's got the date and the time and the IP address and all that information. All right, so with AP payments, you can, you know, you can drill back. And so the whole idea here, this is part of our AP automation system. So moving to fully paperless AP. So the whole invoice is paperless and then the payment approvals is, can be paperless as well. So what I'll do, let's just say for some reason they don't want to pay this invoice. So we'll decline this and we'll just say, um, you know, waiting on, ABC before we part, so we'll decline the payment to vendor 1200. Now let's come and look at this one here, vendor 2800. So we click on detail, there's four invoices there. Um, if we want to look at each of those, we can just double click the drill button and come over to workflow documents. You can see the PDF and we can see who approved it. So two people approved it, and we can do that for each of the invoices. So let's say we're happy with that one, so we'll approve that. Okay, so now we've got this one vendor, this change, we've approved that, we've approved the credit limit change, we've approved the GL journal, and we've approved one payment and declined one. So now we click on the post button, and so WN now goes and pushes all of those along through the process. Now, what I'll do is I'll just log in as the CEO because I quite often forget to do the second approval. Oh, actually, no, let's just stay in here. So let's go, if we come to our customer, um, it was customer 8831. And if we come to this tab, we can now see that the change of the credit limit from $20,000 to $30,000 was approved. So now that's been applied to the customer. If we come to our vendors, if we come to the very end, we can see number 27 is now there as a valid vendor because we approved it. If we go back, I don't know if you remember, but I declined 
vendor number 16, so that means ZZ0016, so, so that vendor's not, not throwing in that list. Now if we come to our general ledger journals, oh yeah, let's, let's, we need another approval, but let's just come in here to show this to you. So here's our batch list, and remember for the GL journals, we set up that it needed two approvals. So first of all, the controller and then the CEO. So here, because only one approval has been done so far, this batch is still sitting in that status of awaiting approvals. And then now if we come to our AP payments, so you can see our batch 119. So that, that had three payments in it. Um, and two of them needed to be approved. We declined one of them, which was this one here, to vendor 1200. So we declined that. So WN has deleted it out of that batch and push, created it into this new batch, ready for AP, so they don't need to re-enter the data. And now this batch, because all of the ones that need to be reviewed have been reviewed, this batch is now set to ready to post. So now we can just push it along through the rest of the, the normal process. <clears throat> and then after it's been processed, then, then you print the checks and do the EFT processing. All right, so now we'll just log in as the CEO. We'll do the second approval on the um, general ledger journals. Uh, so come into our approval console. So now if we go and look at that GL batch, you can now see that here it is here. Uh, so it's now ready to post. So we can now click on the post button. Right, so that's showing just the two approvals that are required there. Right, so that's really just showing the I guess still trying to show quickly the like the different areas that um, uh, WN covers. We've just got a few other key things that we want to uh, explain. So, um, so one of them is the inquiries. So we've got a management inquiry screen here, and this is quite powerful. So you can look at this. Will just show us. Um, if we click in process, it'll show us all of the ones that are still going through the approval process. <clears throat> but we can look at all of the events. <clears throat> so here, if I just look at, I want to look at all of the workflow events for vendors. <clears throat> so I can see down here, it shows me someone tried to create a new record here and someone changed a vendor here. We can click on the print button to see what that was all about. So it's got a pretty good sort of audit trail of those approvals. Um, another thing is substitutions and reallocations. So just like with all of <clears throat> with our other workflow modules, you know, by definition a workflow module means people need to do approvals and people will go on annual leave. So the system has got what we call substitution. So when someone goes on leave for a week, they can put a record into substitutions. And then, then what they're saying for that time period, for anything that comes to them to get sent to another person um, to be approved. So that substitutions, we've got reallocations. Um, it's more if a person's on sick leave or unplanned leave and something needs to push be pushed through quickly, then you can reallocate that to another user. There's different controls, you know, you can limit who can do all of this, so it's quite tight from a control point of view. Um, and then another thing, just probably one other thing, oh yeah, was notifications. So, so what we've looked about looked at up till now was the whole approval side of it and with all of those ones even though they're in the workflow screen you can still 
just have a notification. So you, all of these ones here, <clears throat> excuse me, you can either have an approval or a notification. So that's to be, for you to decide. But then we've also got under this notification screens screen, this is the entities where only a notification can be done. So you cannot have an approval process on these ones. And it's really the key ones here. Well, day end is it's quite an important one. So you can have a, an email sent out when day end is run. Um, but the real key ones here are the OE transactions and the PO transactions. Um, so under OE orders, shipments, invoices, credit notes, and on the purchase order side, orders, invoices, receipts, you can have um, notifications. And so here we've got one here, um, PO, if a purchase order is over $10,000, then a notification can be sent to somebody. Um, so yeah, we've got quite a few customers using this on the order entry side. So if an, if an order is over, you know, over someone's credit limit or over a certain dollar value, then it can send an email alert to people. All right, so that's the notification side of it. Um, and yes, and I think we've also covered declines. So yeah, so that's really, I think, quite a quick view over all of um, WN. Yeah, so just I think I've touched on some of these points already. It's very easy to implement WN. So, you know, from a user point of view, what they do doesn't really change. And then just in terms of differentiators, we've touched on this a few times already, but all of the WN data is within the SAGE database. So when you do dumps and loads, it gets um, carried across. There's, it's just a single system, so it's not like you've got syncing with any other system. Then the configuration, I think hopefully you've seen that it's very easy to configure, so it's quite powerful, but also easy. And so, you know, it's got a, therefore a low cost of ownership, which is a really good thing. And it also features as a key part of our end-to-end -end procure to pay system. All right, so that's about it from me. So Bill, are you able to sure. keep going from here? I can do. Thanks a lot, Jamie. So this is just a high-level overview of the Pacific Tech modules. We have Advanced Stock Take, which is a extension to uh, IC's uh, current Stock Take and gives you multiple worksheets, the ability to go back retroactively to month ends uh, in various periods. Uh, Audit Logger, Big Brother, I think is we've talked a few times about uh, keeping track of various activities uh, after they've happened um, as an audit trail. Commitment accounting uh, gives you uh, advanced fiscal management reporting and budgetary position. Funds availability is really effective in our purchasing workflow. When you're dealing with procurement, you have cost centers and you can look at your current budget before you requisition more spending or potentially approve it. Internal issues is also another one that works with our purchasing workflow and is how you can relieve inventory for internal use from your storage locations. Key communications is an advanced module for communicating, sending out documents, having a document log that is a little more sophisticated where you can go back and verify communications have been sent out and resend them quickly. And it's all sent out like your, your statements, invoices and such all through an HTML SMTP interface. In terms of other ones, we've got our payables workflow. Many of you know about that. And it works also with our AP automation where you can automate your invoices to vendors. And actually you can automate the input of the invoices through our AP automation. Purchasing workflow works nicely with that where you're you know, able to do your requisitioning and control your purchase flow and POs. PW Web gives you a lot of control and remote functionality where you can do web requisitions, for example, Example, on your purchasing workflow. You can do remote approvals on, on all of these workflows, including the one we saw today, workflow notifications. Vendor catalogs works wonderfully with our purchasing workflow, where you can control vendor supply agreements for pricing, expiry dates, and such, where you can, you can either suggest or, or actually force people to buy from specific vendors. Workflow documents works with with all of our workflows and is what gives you the ability to attach the documents to these workflows so you can become paperless and makes 
makes it much easier to move documentation around your organization, eliminates the need for a filing cabinet. And then of course, our workflow and notifications that we saw today that Jamie covered. These are some of the end users that we have using our solutions in North America. We're quite proud of organizations like Atlantic Gold, Dumas, Space Center Houston, Red Path Mining, Mattawa First Nations, CWC Energy Services. We have quite a few verticals that uh, uh, specifically benefit from our solutions. And so you may want to touch base with us to talk about these verticals because we can help you align with uh, maybe some of your contacts that are, are within those verticals. I'm here for you in North America as your contact to assist you with product information. And we do have other videos to do with our other solutions, you know, the AP automation, purchasing workflow, expense reporting. So please feel free to be in touch anytime for assistance. And again, we really thank you very much for your time today.